Hey guys, in this video we're going to create our database with its tables and we're also going to implement the uh, database library or the database class so that we can uh, so that we can easily create queries and run them. Okay, so I'm going to go to PHP my admin. And if you've been following along and you installed XAMP uh, or XAMP then just go to localhost slash php my admin alright and I'm gonna go to databases and create a new database actually we already have one named php lovers blog so I'm going to this one I'm just gonna call blog alright so we need two tables the first is gonna be the post table I believe there's seven fields. Okay, so we're going to have an ID, which is going to be an integer. Max will be 11 characters. And this is going to be our primary key. And it's also going to auto increment. Alright, next we want the category. Now, this is going to be a foreign key uh, field for the categories ID table with ID row. Uh, so they're basically going to be connected. Um, we'll have 11 characters. Okay, next we want the post title, which is going to be a var varchar, and we'll put 255 max. Uh, body for the post body is going to be text. Okay, we'll leave the length blank. Next we'll have the author. <coughs> Now, if, you, if this was a, a big production app, chances are you would have an, an author's or user's table that you would link this to. But in this case, it's just going to be um, it's just going to be text. It's going to be the author's name. It's not going to be um, a foreign key ID or anything like that. All right. Next is tags, which will just be a string, comma separated values. That can be a varchar, uh, two fifty five. And then the last one is going to be a date and actually a timestamp. And we're going to set the default to current timestamp, which will automatically insert the current time when that um, record goes into the database. Okay, so that's good. Click Save. Next, we want to create the categories table, which is extremely small, it's only two columns. Okay, we're basically just going to have an ID and a name. Okay, ID, integer, it's going to auto increment, primary key, and then the name is going to be Varchar255. Alright, so that's our entire database. What I want to do now is just insert some records in there just so we have something to uh, experiment with in the front end. Okay, so I'm going to go to insert. I'm sorry, I'm going to click on categories and insert. Okay, so the ID is auto increment, so we're not going to put in an ID. We just need some names. So we'll say news, events. Uh, let's. Actually, that's good, yeah. Okay, news and events. All right, we'll put two more in. Let's put uh, tutorials and miscellaneous. All right, so we get our categories. Now posts, click on that, click insert, and category will say one. Uh, let's just grab the content we have here. Let's see, I'll grab this international conference for the title. The body, let's grab these paragraphs. It's a long paragraph. Okay, so I'll copy that. And you can see that it does have the paragraph tags. Oh, I left one off the end. 
Okay, I'm just going to copy this because they're all going to have the same body. Okay, author, myself, tags, let's just say PHP news, PHP events. Okay, the next one, we'll put it in the same category. And this will be um, PHP 5.6.0 beta released. Okay, so let's put those in. Alright, so now we have two, we have four categories and we have two posts that are both in category one. Okay, so that gives us something to work with. So what we want to do now is we want to create our database class. So let's go to let's first go to config. Okay, our config PHP class, and let's create our database credentials and assign them to a constant. A constant is like a variable, it, it's a placeholder, uh, but the difference is that a constant doesn't change. All right, it's constant, it, it's, it's always the value that you set it at, all right, and usually set them in some kind of configuration file. Okay, so what we need to do is open up a PHP tag. All right, and we're gonna say define Okay, so we want two parameters here. The first is going to be the name of the constant, which I'm going to put DB. And typically, constants are always uppercase. All right, um, not typically, pretty much always uppercase. All right, so that's going to be DB host. And then we want the value, which we're going to set to local host. Okay, so we're just going to define all our parameters like this. Okay, the next one we want is db user. Okay, so I'm going to put my MySQL username. Okay, next we'll have db pass. And I'm going to put in my simple password. Okay, and then we're going to have db name, which is going to be the name of the database. In our case is, in my case, is blog. All right, so that's basically um, all we're going to have in the config file. But it's even if you you have nothing, it's it's good to have a configuration file in case you want to set something in the future. All right, so make sure you save that and let's open up the database class or a library. When I say library or class, I'm I'm talking about the same thing really. All right, so. Now we're going to get into object oriented programming. All right. So in object oriented programming, you have what's called so I'm a class. I'm going to give you a really quick, which, very simple um, you example. Can build objects. If you're a seasoned PHP developer, then uh, you can just skip through this part. All right. So I'm going to use uh, uh, an easier analogy uh, as opposed to what we're going to actually be doing. Uh, let's say we have a class called dog. All right, so in this class, we can define properties, also called attributes, of the dog, like its color, um, uh, its, what else about a dog? Its breed, all right, its color, its breed, things like that. Uh, and then we can also define methods, um, which are basically functions inside of a class, all right? So function and method uh, the word can be used interchangeably. All right, so uh, a method would be bark, uh, lay down, eat. All right, so all actions, those would be methods. All right, so if we want to define <coughs> a property, then we can say public um, color. All right, so the public is an access identifier, basically. There's three levels. There's public, protected, and private. 
all right so public means that even if we're not working from within this dog class and we're in another file or whatever we can access this color attribute all right even from outside the class if we set it to protected then we can only access it from this class as well as any classes that it extends all right or any classes that extends the dog class okay because you can actually do extensions we could do maybe a class rottweiler and extend it from this class of dog and if this is protected then we'd be able to use color inside of the rottweiler class as well all right and then the last one is private okay so if it's private you can't access it from outside and you can't even access it from a class that is extended from dog all right so we wouldn't even be able to use this in the Rottweiler class. All right, I hope that makes sense. Um, and when you define them, you can actually you can do this. What we're doing here, I'm actually going to keep this at private because actually no, I'm not. We need this public. All right, so you could also say public equals if you want to set a default red. All right, although I haven't seen too many red dogs. All right, so that's a property. Okay, so the next thing we can assign is methods. Okay, so we can say public function bark. All right, so um, this function, I guess we could say echo bark. Okay. Can't type today. All right, so we have a class of dog and we can set its color and we can make it bark alright so this is a really stupid example but it's a really simple example alright now with just this code here it's not going to do anything we're just defining a class to use it we could most likely be in, an, in, a, in another file we're not going to use it from inside the class file this is basically just the library um, where we define stuff we would use it in another file and to use it, you'd have to include this database file or dog, whatever this is. Um, and then I don't need the PHP tags. You could create a variable called dog, and you could set that to new dog. All right. So this is what this is doing is assigning this variable a dog object from your class. All right. And now that you have that object in that variable you can call its properties or its um, methods alright so we could say dog color equals black okay and this is what you'll use to access the properties and methods you use this little arrow okay um, and then we could call we can make it bark we could say dog bark okay and that would just echo out bark so that's just a really simple example that I wanted to throw out there um, classes properties methods uh, objects okay so those are the, the basic four um, aspects of this that that you should know all right so let's create our real class all right so we're gonna say class database and we're gonna have uh, a few uh, properties here so we're gonna have public host um, public username public password and if you can recognize this um, list we just created the constants that hold the actual values for these uh, variables let's so say db name and we're actually going to set those up here as well so db host i'm sorry host is going to be equal to our db host constant and you could just as well put the actual value inside of here but it's not very good practice to to do that um, at least in my opinion uh, so we're just including the constants in this file to um, 
for the values. So DB, so username will be DB user, and the password will be DB pass. All right, and then the DB name. All right, so we're going to need a few other properties here as well. We'll say public. Um, public DB and basically this is going to be a database handler I'm sorry no we don't need that we don't need public DB um, we need a link okay so the link is gonna represent the um, MySQLi object which I'll explain in a little bit alright and then I believe that's it oh we're also gonna have an error property for giving errors All right, so that's it for the properties. Next, we want our methods. Um, so, in a class, you have something called a constructor, and a constructor is basically it's a function that runs when you instantiate the class. All right, so if we have something in another file and we say db equals new database, just by uh, instantiating it like this we're gonna call a constructor if we have one alright every other function you have to actually call you would have to say like DB connect or something like that um, but the constructor it just calls automatically when you create the object okay so we're gonna create a constructor so public function and it has to be formatted like this you need two underscores and then the word construct Okay, so that's a constructor in PHP. All right, and what we want to do in this constructor is assign um, these variables to our class using this. Okay, so we're going to say this host is equal to host. Actually, we need to pass these values in. This, all these uh, credentials, we need to pass in here. Okay, host username password db name and then we're just going to assign this host to host and this username to username and the reason we do this is so we can access these from our entire class okay they become they become class properties instead of just properties of this function. Okay, so this password is going to equal password. This db name equals db name. All right, and I just like to format this a little bit. All right. So there's one more thing we want to do here, and that is call connect, call a connect function, which we're going to create. And we can call it using this. All right, so whenever you want to, if you're in a function in the class and you want to call another function from this class, you use this. Same thing with the properties. Okay, so this is a, a very important keyword. All right, so let's create the connect. Actually, let's add a, some comments here. Okay, so class constructor. Call this connector. Actually, you know what? This is going to be a private function because we're calling it from within our class. Okay, we're calling it here. We're not going to be calling this from any other file. Okay, so we're going to use private function connect. All right, now what we're going to do is assign this link to our connection. 
All right, so we want to say new MySQLi. Okay, so this is the MySQLi API. Uh, basically, this is just to connect. So we're going to pass in this host and this username. password and this DB name okay so we'll pass those in <clears throat> and then we're gonna make sure that we are connected so we're gonna do an if statement here and basically we're just gonna say if not this link okay so if this link is not uh, true all right, if we connect here, then this link is going to be true. So we're going to say if it's false, then this error equals, and we're just going to put in an error string. We'll say connection failed. And then we can actually pass in, um, whoop. we can say this link connect error and this will give us the actual error uh, the actual MySQL error okay and then uh, of course we want to return false so that's our connect class I'm sorry our connect function so what I want to do now is actually try to connect alright so I'm going to save this and go to my index PHP and we need to first of all include the database class or file so up at the top here we're going to include libraries slash um, database dot PHP all right so let's just make sure that includes okay all right now it's not going to do anything until we actually create a database object. All right, so I'm going to open an, a separate block down here, PHP block, and I'm going to create DB object. All right, and like I showed you, it, we're, we're going to have a variable which is going to be equal to new database. All right, so we don't have to pass anything in here because actually hold on a second we made a mistake here um, we do not need to do this um, we can do this if we want to pass in all our parameters in the file here alright so if we want to put all those in here but I don't want to do that so I'm just gonna get rid of this and this and all we need is the connect function because it because those um, properties are already being set up here I don't know why I did that alright so that should at least give us an error if we're not connecting um, let's see use of oh we did we need to include our config file as well okay so config should be at the very top alright so we don't have an error now to test this we want to go in our database class actually we'll go in our config and let's just mess up this password okay so I'll throw a character in there to, to trip it up and now if we reload we now get access denied for root at localhost so it's not connecting now alright so we know that if we have the correct password and we don't get an error then we're connected alright so now what we need to do is write a couple more functions or methods whatever you want to call them and um, then we can use it we can use the database object so let's create the um, we're gonna create the select method okay to select from our database Alright, 
so we're going to say public function select. All right, now this is going to take in our query. All right, and then what we're going to do is create a result, a result variable, which is going to be equal to this link. All right, this link is basically referring to uh, our MySQLi object. Okay, so whatever we would do with this, we can do with this. All right, so we're going to say this link query, which is basically like saying MySQLi query. And we're going to pass in the query that we passed in from the object. And then we're going to say or die. Okay, I know that's kind of violent, but it's going to die. All right, and when it dies, we want to get a message of what happened. And we can do that like this. So error and then line. Okay, so this should look familiar. We did this kind of stuff um, back in the uh, quiz the quiz project. All right, so we have that result. Now we're going to say if we'll say if result num rows is greater than 0. All right, so basically this returns how many rows it finds from the query. If we say select let's select all from users uh, and then um, this would return however many users were found. Okay, so basically, what, how many, however many users are in that table. All right, and if it's greater than zero, then we're just going to return our result. Okay, so then we can access that from outside. We're also going to put an else, and if there are no rows returned, then we're going to return false. All right, so very simple. Um, if you look at uh, some database classes, whether it's MySQLi or PDO, um, they get really, really complicated. This is a very, very simple um, database class. Okay, so just know that they're they're usually a lot more in depth than this. Okay, so that's our select method. Now let's create our insert. Put in some comments, make it look nice. Okay, insert is also going to take in a query variable. And basically, we're going to say insert underscore row. equals this link query. Okay, so I'm actually just going to grab this all right and we want to validate the insert so we're going to say if insert row okay so if the row did in fact get inserted then what do we want to do um, what I'm gonna want to do is just redirect all right we want to redirect to the index page um, well the admin index page these classes here insert and our update class are only going to be accessible through the admin area okay so um, what we're going to do is just redirect so we use the header function all right so header location is going to be index dot php now when i when we're redirected after we insert it we want to have a message displayed all right and this a few things you can do to achieve that. 
Um, what I'm going to do is just include a get variable inside of the URL. All right, so we'll just have something like um, msg equals um, no say record added. All right, so then when we're actually redirected, actually let's just URL encode this. Okay, so we're just going to um, use PHP to call a function called URL encode. Um, yeah, that's right. All right. URL encode. Actually, you know what? Let's make these outer quotes double quotes. And then right here we need a dot. All right, yeah, so that should encode this correctly. All right, so when we're redirected, we'll have that variable that we can grab and we can print that out on the screen. All right, so if the row doesn't insert, then we're just going to um, basically die and call an error. Okay, so I'm going to just throw this, throw this in here. Um, all right, so I'm still not right with this string here. Code. I think we just want to get rid of this quote in this period. All right. So yeah, so if it doesn't insert, then we're just going to die and it's going to give us an error. Okay, so that's basically it for the insert. Um, update is going to be pretty similar, so I'm just going to copy this. Update. Okay, so update query. I'm going to change this to update row. It's going to call the query, and then we're going to validate it. And then for the message, we'll just say record updated. All right, so actually after these headers, we just want to put an exit. Okay. And then the delete function, also very similar. So I'm just going to copy this. So you can see this is a really simple database class. So that should be it, at least for now. Um, we have select, insert, update, and delete. All right, so if we need more later on, if we need to get the total or something like that from the database, we can add that as well. All right, so I'm going to save that. And I'm going to end the video here. And then in the next one, we will test this out.